Hi there, I'm Anna Aspness from Anna Aspness Designs. I'm passionate about modern memory keeping with an artsy twist and help digital scrapbookers and photo enthusiasts feel like artists. I create abstract digital graphics designed for use in photo editing software programs such as Adobe Photoshop and Elements and then show you how to use them. In this video, I want to talk about brushes, what they are, the format they're delivered in, as well as showing you how to load and use them. I will be working in Adobe Photoshop Elements 11, but the techniques demonstrated in this video can be duplicated with minimal variation in similar versions of Adobe Photoshop or Elements. Lesson 1 About Brushes Brushes are key to yielding the artsy look you desire in your layouts. You can view them as digital versions of the rubber stamps found in traditional scrapbooking or as tools to be painted with in free-flowing strokes. Each application, of course, will yield different results depending on the style of brush you choose. In this section, I want to show you how to load and use brushes. Brushes are usually delivered in two file formats, .abr and .png. ABR files are loaded into the brushes palette while the PNG files can be opened into your workspace and manipulated as desired. I include the PNG files as deliverables in my brush sets for preview purposes, as well as those rare cases when you might accidentally save over an ABR file and need to redefine them yourself. When you purchase a brush set, you'll have to unzip it and then you'll be presented with a folder that includes the PNG files there are six in this particular brush set and the ABR file which will be loaded into the brushes panel a terms of use and then usually you'll also have the preview of the product included this is the brush set that's included with Anna Blends module 3 blending with brushes and so I haven't yet got around to creating that product preview lesson 2 loading brushes Initiate your preferred version of Photoshop Elements or Photoshop and then click on the Paintbrush tool in the Tools panel to activate the Brushes palette. In the Brushes palette you want to make sure that you have Brush Tool B selected and that the Brush Mode is also on this brush icon. And then in order to load the brushes we need to go to this uh, drop down window click on this small downward facing arrow and then again up to the top of this palette there's another small downward facing arrow if you click that again it activates a fly out menu with options it allows you to change the previews how you wish to view your brushes I actually prefer to have it on a large thumbnail and then it also allows you to load brushes and if you click on the load brushes option you can navigate to the ABR file in your supplies folder click it and then click load or you can double click it and it will automatically replace any of the brushes that you currently have in your palette I already had these brushes loaded previously and so there was no significant change. When you'd like to append a set of brushes to the palette as opposed to replacing them, you'll need to use the preset manager and to do that we go back up to that small downward facing arrow, click on it, go down the menu and select the preset manager option. This opens a dialog box where you can see the brushes we already have loaded in our palette and then click on the option to append and from here you can navigate to the brush set that you want to load in this case I'm just going to reload the brush set, set that we already have just for demonstration purposes double click on it and you can see that that brush set now appears next to the existing one click done click on the downward facing arrow and then you can see that those brushes also appear in the brushes palette you can select any of those brushes by clicking on any of the thumbs and then you can also change the size of the brush and the opacity of the brush 
and then you can also change the blend mode I usually keep it on normal and then change the blend mode of the layer after I have stamped or used the brush on the layer in my layout. So you can also adjust the brush settings um, by moving any one of these levers. Um, obviously changes the fade and the hue, jitter, scatter and spacing. Uh, also the roundness. You can see how that affects this small circle at the bottom here. The one that I use the most would be the angle and you can adjust the angle of the brush or the orientation simply by moving this arrow around and when you've made your specifications you can click on the small close icon and then if you're a tablet user if you have a bamboo fun or um, any of those um, tablets that are available from Wacom uh, you can click on this tablet setting and this allows you to make specifications on the properties that the pen will control so I'm going to leave that one alone for now just so that you know it's there and click the close icon. Once you've loaded and selected a brush with appropriate properties you can then begin using them. Lesson 3 using brushes. I've created a 8x8 layout at 300 dpi and the reason I've gone with 8x8 over the standard 12x12 is because brushes um, cannot be larger than 8 by 8 inches. I'm going to start by creating a new layer. You always want to put um, each different brush stroke on a new layer if possible. This allows you to make easy edits later by turning the visibility of it, all those layers on or off or deleting them as desired. I'm going to go ahead and click on the paintbrush tool in the tools panel which activates your brush options. Ensure that you have this brush mode selected and also this brush op option. Click on the downward facing arrow to activate the different brushes that you have loaded in your palette and select the one of your choosing. I'm going to go with this clipping mask. Click on the thumb to select it and you can adjust the size and the opacity by adjusting these levers. You can also adjust the rotation or orientation of the brush as desired. The next step is to select a color for your brush. Go to the foreground color in the tools panel and click on the foreground color thumb to activate your color picker. And from here you can click around any area to select color of your choosing. You also have the option to click on any of these hues in the sidebar to change the color of the brush. When you're happy with your selection, you can click OK. Place your mouse or your pen over the new layout and you can see that we have an imprint of where our brush will be placed on, on the canvas. If you can't see that, go ahead and press the caps locks button on your keyboard and you should be able to to toggle that visibility on and off. And then go ahead and click to stamp that brush onto the canvas. You can also paint with brushes, create a new layer, go down and select a different brush. In this case I'm going to select this first one by clicking on it. I'm going to reduce the size of that brush right down to 15 pixels. I'm going to bump up the opacity to 100. Change the foreground color and this time I'm going to go with a darker gray, click OK and then you can go ahead and use sweeping strokes to um, have a more free-flowing approach to using brushes. So as you can see using multiple brushes with different colors, sizes and opacities can really add a truly artsy approach to your digital pages and composites. Please email me at Anna underscore Aspinus at yahoo.com if you experience any difficulties with these techniques or have any questions about the content of this video. I thank you again for supporting my art.